Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I'm very excited to bring you a review for the brand new Transformers Shattered Glass Ultra Magnus. This is the first figure being released in the second assortment of Shattered Glass figures coming from primarily Hasbro Pulse and some other retailers worldwide. It comes with this new head based off of the bludgeon-inspired head of the original Shattered Glass Ultra Magnus. But one thing they don't advertise in the box is that it also comes with just a regularly stylized Ultra Magnus head. And that allows you to just have a Shattered Glass Magnus that looks a little more, you know, like his normal positive universe counterpart, or allows you to unofficially have a Delta Magnus slash Power Convoy toy. That being said, if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're gonna take a look at Ultra Magnus's packaging, then we'll put it up. We'll get a look at his instructions, and then we'll see Ultra Magnus himself in vehicle, standard robot, and super robot modes. Naturally, I'll be doing plenty of group shots and comparisons today. And then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So Ultra Magnus comes in a large leader-sized box. And I do mean large. It's bigger than a normal leader-sized box. Almost commander-sized. Which does, unfortunately, make him look comically small imposed against it. Because you can see, he's just kind of hanging out down here, just barely sticking out, you know, through the bottom of the window. And, like, we already know that the Ultra Magnus mold is a small leader class toy, but they're not doing this guy any favors because they're not, like, propping him up. You know, normally, when they take a small figure and put it in oversized packaging, they bring the figure up so it at least, you know, fills the box in a little better and looks bigger. They just didn't do that. They're, he's just hanging out. <laughs> he just looking at you like he's, you know, looking over a tall counter or something at you, so go figure. You can see the new head tooling right here, and I've played with it a little bit already, and it's a bit loose. You can see it's kind of wobbly. I don't think it's so loose that it'll be an issue with posing, but it's definitely looser than I'd like. So, uh, I don't know, maybe tightening the screw might help with that, because we are going to be messing with that screw to swap out the two different heads. And this is a first for the Transformers brand where they include an optional head that you actually have to like disassemble the head that's there to put the new one on. You actually have to like take the screw out and everything. We kind of got a taste of this with that Creatures Collide 4-pack where most of the characters came with swappable heads, but those you just popped them on and off the ball joint. There was no, you know, hardware required. This one's a little bit more intricate, so hopefully you have like a normal size Phillips head screwdriver laying around somewhere. All right, so we see the front of the box, and it's done up in the same trappings as that first wave of Shattered Glass toys. You get the Transformers logo with that purple to pinkish gradient. You get the Shattering Autobot symbol with that same gradient going on. We can see the logo up here on the top. And then on the side, we get something that's pretty similar to what they're doing with Legacy. It's just, you know, in that cut corner format that we saw with Shattered Glass. So we get that real close up of his face right here. And then we get the more zoomed out artwork showing most of his body. Um, seems to be a bit of a different art style than the other stuff. It's more of a, I don't know what you call it, like a watercolors effect, where he doesn't have very uh, distinct outlines. Everything's just kind of colored and shaded. Interesting. On the back, we get our renders of the toy in the combined vehicle, vehicle cab, in a robot, and super robot modes. I do stand corrected. They actually do show you that he has the alternate head here. So, not sure how I missed that detail, but it's good to have it on there. They're at least advertising it. So he apparently takes 16 steps to transform between just the cab and then the full truck, 12 steps to transform the robot, and then another 21 to transform the super robot. So I'll take their word for it. Doesn't seem like that many, but, you know. He also, I haven't really pointed this out yet, comes with parts from the Legacy Laser Optimus Prime, primarily his weapons here, his axe, sword, and even the Matrix, oddly enough, that combined to this very large sword which I imagine is supposed to invoke the Terminus Blade that was prominently used by the original Shattered Glass Ultra Magnus to try to, like, shatter the multiverse. This, of course, didn't happen, and the blade was instead used by Nexus Prime to separate all the different universes into their own distinct, unconnected universes, which got rid of the whole universal singularity concept that, like, Primus and Unicron and... The 13 were supposed to be a part of, and now they're all separate. It was basically a way for Hasbro to, like, write themselves out of a corner. <laughs> because the multiversal singularity concept just started creating more issues than, you know, helping. So they needed a way out, and they basically just hit the undo button on that. Alright, so we get some flavor text here. It says, Ultra Magnus has become bored with warfare. 
Having ended more sparks than he can count, he sets his sights on something greater, the destruction of the universe. Well, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? So I'm guessing this guy will follow a similar story arc. So this may in fact officially be the Terminus Blade. Now it is weird seeing this figure include Laser Optimus Prime's sword, but not actually be the Laser Optimus Prime toy, because if you know the original Shatterglass Magnus, he was based on the Laser Optimus Prime design, just like the, you know, concurrently released Shatterglass Optimus Prime. So the sword, you know, it made sense for him to have a sword like that, and they just dubbed it the Terminus Sword and gave it a whole backstory. So it would make sense for him to have a sword like that. Uh, personally, I'm disappointed that this isn't the Laser Optimus Prime mold. As much as I'm not crazy about that mold, I do feel it suits the character better, and it would have freed up, you know, this body to just separately be a Delta Magnus or Power Convoy, rather than have to pull double duty as both Shatterglass Ultra Magnus and Delta Magnus. Because what happens when you do that, when you're trying to, you know, spread a toy across two pretty different looking characters, I mean, really the only thing they have in common is the colors. Uh, when you do that, the toy doesn't fully succeed at being either character, it's just kind of a blend of the two. I would have much preferred just getting this character in the Laser Optimus body and then getting a separate Delta Magnus release. But it is what it is. This is what they're going with. It seems to be something that they're going to keep doing in the Shattered Glass line because we saw we're getting Slicer, who is supposed to be a Shattered Glass Decepticon, but is also the regular Decepticon. And we're also getting Flame War, who is supposed to be a Shattered Glass character, but aside from the Red Decepticon badge, looks exactly like her regular G1 counterpart. So at this point, they're just like cramming things in there. And I I'm not crazy about that because the first wave felt very distinct. You know, all the characters were their own thing. They weren't trying to be anyone else. This way feels more like they're kind of shoehorning in characters and figures that don't really work. So that's just me. I'm going to move on from that for now because this intro is running a little long. All right. So then on this side, we just get a really big shot of the art from the other side. And then, like the first wave, this comes with a comic if you get it through Pulse. So it's just a, you know, figure exclusive cover on a retail comic. You get... Delta Magnus prominently featured here. I already got it out of cellophane, so we can really catch like the gloss of the little shards and everything. It looks really nice, amazing artwork. And I won't spoil the comic for you, but you know, it's pretty interesting. Kind of goes over how Ultra Magnus got to where he is, you know, giving us an idea of what his motivations might be. And uh, yeah, a bit of a kind of a surprise ending there that I won't spoil for you. All right, so that's the packaging. That's the comic book. Sorry if I went on a bit of a tangent there, but yeah, I gotta talk about it at some point during this video, so I'll talk about it now or talk about it later. But now, it is time to open this thing up. Okay, here's the instruction sheet for Magnus, and we can see a nice little render of him right here on the front. Got his name, your logos. This unfolds into a rather large piece of paper. So up top, we get the uh, weapon configuration for the super robot mode, showing you how to have him hold his uh, rifle, his giant sword, attaches missile launchers, and then this shows you how to swap the heads. Now it doesn't mention anything about actually unscrewing anything, but taking this head off and putting it back on, I highly, highly recommend removing the screw and separating the halves because the entire back of the head, as we'll see, is clear plastic, and I, I just don't see any good coming from like popping that on and back off before you know things start cracking. This one, you actually really don't need to because the clear plastic is just a much smaller area. It doesn't make up the little socket there for the ball joint. And also the screw on the back, as we'll see, is really, really tiny to where not even my little like tweaker set can fit in there. So yeah, I would unscrew this. This one, you can just do whatever you want with. All right. So we get the instructions to uh, disassemble the armor off of the robot mode and just turn them into a small little Optimus looking robot and then transform that little robot into the truck cab. Come around the back, and we get the transformation for the armor bits into the trailer of the truck, and how to attach them to the cab. And then lastly, we get instructions for attaching the weapons to the vehicle mode. Now, one thing that's interesting is they don't actually show you how to put his little, you know, combo weapon together. There's nothing about it in the instructions. Now, it does come mostly assembled. You do get the axe and the sword already put together in the packaging, 
but the matrix is just kind of hanging out on its own. So, you know, it shouldn't take a genius to figure out where to put it, but it's still kind of a strange omission from the instructions. Okay, now we get to see the full vehicle mode, cab and trailer. And we can see it's mostly blue with a lot of red and then a little bit of black mixed in. You can also see a couple different shades of like silver colors. You get a really bright silver in areas like the front grill and the bumper. And then you get a really dark, almost gunmetal silver for you know some of the highlights, the thigh area, things like that. So, you know, aside from the color, it is just the Kingdom Ultra Magnus. All the sculpting that's really visible in this mode is, you know, just the same. It rolls pretty well. Though the wheels are floppy on this copy. You can see they have a lot of give to them, which is unfortunate. I've also noticed that none of the wheels are painted, unlike the King of Versions. So they kind of skimped there, and I think that's really unfortunate. Now, being just more or less a recolor of the Kingdom toy, that means he does come with the same weaknesses of that mold, and especially that version. The cab still has the robot arms and fish just hanging off the back. And because of the way the Kingdom version of the trailer is configured, they're even more visible. The Siege version at least, you know, covered this stuff up. Now, I know a lot of people pointed out in my Kingdom Ultra Magnus review that there are, you know, kind of workarounds and fixes to cover those hands and those arms up. The thing is, if you need a fix to make a toy look right and make it look good, then that's kind of a failure on the part of the designers. You shouldn't need to fix the toy. The toy should already be satisfactory when you get it you know out of the packaging now of course you know what is satisfactory is uh subjective but i think no obvious robot parts just hanging out on the vehicle mode is a pretty universal standard so you know for a toy that's this complex and this expensive you do expect something better than these just kind of chilling there because they really hurt the look of the cab uh, aside from that you know, it's quite good looking. The trailer, because this is a retool of, you know, a very different alt mode, it doesn't match the original G1 trailer, right? We know it's quite different looking from that. It doesn't have the same functionality or anything. So it's kind of a blend of, you know, the Siege toy and the G1 Magnus design, which not my preference. We know through some leaks and some rumors that apparently the plan was to originally have a Commander class Magnus for Kingdom which would have been a white Earthrise Optimus Prime with like fully functional armor. And then budget cuts happened and they said, nah, and they scrapped it. So imagine having that version of Magnus, like the fully functional Ultra Magnus toy, and then getting, you know, this deco for it. Would have been way more satisfactory. But for what we get, it is nice looking. I do say I really like the colors. I like the deep, almost like royal blue used. And uh, I like the the deep like blood clear red on the weapons there which honestly makes you know his weapons kind of the superior versions compared to scourge from the new velocitron line so overall pretty decent rolls well my biggest thing you know realistically i wish they would have done better is just painted those rims it looks very toyetic without the painted rims and loses you know some of that realism that it would otherwise have that you know even the kingdom version has so bit of a shame not a huge factor, but it is one of those slight little details that could have elevated this toy quite a bit. And here's our first group shot with all the different toolings of this Ultra Magnus mold. And I decided to go by different toolings. I didn't include the dirty Ultra Magnus from the Netflix line. I didn't include that uh, premium finish line Ultra Magnus. I and mean, for one, I don't have it. But even if I did, I wouldn't include it here. All right, I just want to look at you know the different varieties of the molding. And yes, these two are technically different molding because he has the new head and he does come with some new accessories. Maybe that's cheating a little bit, but I'm going to go with it. So for anyone that's not super familiar with these, this is the original version of this mold. This is the Siege Ultra Magnus, which was an interesting blend of the Robots in Disguise Ultra Magnus slash Car Robots God Magnus and the G1 character. So that's why his vehicle mode doesn't look much like the original G1 characters and actually bears quite a bit of a resemblance to that car robots or R.I.D. character. Then in that same line, we got this very, very heavy retool. Uh, it's almost an entirely different toy in the form of our Galaxy Upgrade Optimus Prime, which was himself a reference to another Japanese Transformer show, Transformer Cybertron. And then this mold finally got an Earth mode with the advent of Kingdom Ultra Magnus, which ends up being a bit more similar to this guy, shares a lot of the tooling, 
but he also gets a lot of new tooling in the form of the chest, a lot of the armor and stuff, the head, everything. And it just puts him a lot closer to, you know, how the character is supposed to look based on his G1 appearance. So this guy naturally looks, you know, more similar to this one than any others. And because the head's not super visible in this mode, it's not immediately obvious that there is any tooling difference, unless you count the new accessories just kind of hanging out there. Uh, you also notice that due to the new weapon storage, the default positioning for his rifle becomes this front area rather than the back, which is the default for the Kingdom toy. Not like it actually matters, because you can place it in either port if you really want to, but it is interesting how some retooling can actually alter the way a toy configures. So I think all four of these are really great figures overall. I mean, you know my feelings on them. The route they went for the Kingdom Magnus is an ideal. I would have preferred the original plan. And the big issue of the arms just hanging out on the back of the cabs does bother me, but at least it's a little bit less noticeable, you know, in fully combined vehicle mode. Here's a quick look at the truck cab by itself. So we can just see how that looks, you know, without the trailer parts in the way. And, you know, there's nothing new or unexpected here. We still get the fists just stupidly hanging off the back. We get the legs, which make up the rear part slash like trailer hitch section of the toy, though you do have his feet sticking up. So another way that this cab mode just really isn't that great. Uh, the front is where it really shines, right? Because if you just kind of ignore the rest of this, it actually looks more or less like a semi-truck until you see these big old panels sticking off and everything. I mean, honestly, it's just, it's not great. We already know <laughs> vehicle mode, very heavily compromised for, you know, budget reasons and everything. But I will say the paint apps that are on it are nice. We do see a lot of that silver here on the front. It's a very, very nice silver. Those blood red windows, you get some like darker, like super dark silver right here. Get on the smokestacks, which are painted on like some versions of this mold. Now, probably the worst thing about this version is that the wheels are just incredibly floppy. When you see these things, the way they kind of just flop around, move around, they have more give than any other version of the mold I've seen so far. So I don't know if it's just poor QC, if it's mold degradation, but you can see a lot of wiggle room. So that causes it to not roll very smoothly either. So yeah, I think the mold's starting to show its use, which is unfortunate because this is, well, I mean, I guess it's up there, right? Six total uses when you consider Siege, Netflix, Perfect Finish, Galaxy Upgrade Optimus, Kingdom, and now the Shattered Glass version. So yeah, it's, it's probably due for, you know, either retiring the mold or refreshing the actual metal mold a little bit because I think the QC is just starting to slip on the sky a bit. Here's another comparison for the truck cabs. And you can see again, these two, very similar, just recolors. And then this guy is you know, supposed to be this really just odd futuristic car carrier. And this is actually supposed to be the front of a fire truck. Again, just very anime fire truck. And this one also does by far the most different when it comes to the tooling. These guys, their bumper section is just kind of a solid piece with wheels attached and that, you know, flips around to become like a backpack or uh, like a skirt flap or something, depending on the mode that they're in. This guy's is different where these actually come off and become like forearm kibble and really interesting way to work the same tooling in a variety of ways. So I do like the, you know, diversity we get out of this one mold. Now again, they all have the same issues, right? You got the hands and the feet and... You know, they really don't always look great. Oh, here's the wheel comparison, by the way. See, same wheels. These are actually painted. These aren't. Uh, they do have different wheels than our two Siege uh, figures, which share a wheel design, which is supposed to be very, you know, alien. Not necessarily rubberized, more like treads almost. So, you know, quite a bit of variety here. Again, not a great truck mode, but at least there's a great amount of creative retooling here between them. Okay, now we get to take a look at the inner robot form of our SG Ultra Magnus. And this is a, you know, deep blue and mostly black and dark gray recolor of, you know, the Optimus Prime body. And it's meant to evoke the inner robot of the original powered convoy toy. Now, what's really interesting about this, we talked about how, you know, this Ultra Magnus was uh, marketed as basically Shattered Glass character or as the separate character Delta Magnus, and that's why they gave you the alternate head. What's really crazy though is that this inner robot 
was actually in some places marketed as even a third character in the form of Magna Convoy, who was an eHobby exclusive Legends figure based on the classics Optimus Prime, also done up in the colors of that blue powered convoy in a robot. So they're really, really just trying to make this release stretch. And again, like I discussed during the intro, I don't know if I'm really crazy about this approach because now you're trying to market this as three different characters, which means we're not very likely to get separate releases of a Delta Magnus or a Magna Convoy. We're just gonna have to settle for this, whether we like it or not. And even though I think the uh, robot mode of this inner portion is cool looking, the vehicle mode is just trash. So if this is like the only Magna Convoy we get outside of that very expensive eHobby exclusive, it's not very satisfying. Now, I think it's cool he does end up having a sword, which coincidentally, Magna Convoy had a very prominent sword too. They don't look alike at all, but it was called a Matrix Sword. So, you know, it is a Matrix Sword. <laughs> May not be the Matrix Sword, but you know, it's, it's a neat little nod, I guess, little Easter egg. But you know, overall, it's just not a very satisfying release as what's supposed to be a separate character to either Ultra Magnus or Delta Magnus. So while I do think it's a nice little nod, and I think this robot mode itself looks great. You, know, you can turn around, look at the back, shiny backpack, all that. It is really cool. Uh, you know, despite being a bad vehicle mode, it's a great looking Optimus, you know, based robot mode. Uh, even though it is cool to have, it's a nice Easter egg. It also means that we're probably not going to get maybe an Earthrise or something similar based Magna Convoy. Like we're just going to settle for this one. Terrible alt mode and all. So I get what they're going for. You increase the marketability of the toy because people have three different reasons to buy it. Whether they want a Shattered Glass character, whether they want you know, Delta Magnus slash Powered Convoy, or whether they want Magna Convoy. I get it, but it just leaves the finished product not nearly as satisfying for any of those three characters because the design choices have to be spread across all three of them. So yeah, and then like I said, it also means we're probably just not getting individual releases of these guys. Maybe you don't care, maybe you're happy to just get it all in one. Me personally, I would have preferred you know, something a little more varied. Have an Earthrise body for Magna Convoy. Do the Laser Optimus Prime body for the Shattered Glass Ultra Magnus, and then use the Kingdom version for Delta Magnus. That's three different releases, means people are spending roughly three times the amount, maybe two times, because you know two of those molds are smaller. So let's say twice the amount they're spending to get all three of those characters by just buying this one and calling that good for all three. Because I don't think many people are going to buy like three copies of this dude to have all three characters displayed. Sure, some will. Some people just have more money than they know what to do with, but most people probably aren't going to go in that deep. And I think Hasbro releasing three characters this way shows that they don't have a lot of confidence that each of the individual characters is going to sell well enough. So they got to package it all as one thing and hope that alone, you know, justifies the production cost of this toy. I mean, maybe they're right. Maybe they've done their homework and they just don't see it happening and maybe the sales wouldn't be there. I'd like to think that they would each sell enough on their own, but maybe not. Back for the third comparison, we get the other Magnus slash Optimus toys in their small robot modes. And just like with the trucks, you can see quite a bit of retooling. There was already, you know, quite a bit between this guy and his Earth mode, which, you know, this one shares. And then the Optimus one is just so different. Like the entire torso section is like all new parts. He even gets a different gun that resembles the one that came with Cybertron Optimus Prime, rather than the classic Ultra Magnus base gun. And this does give them all a nice bit of variety. And now because this guy has an entire extra weapon, which itself, as we know, can split into multiple weapons and accessories, he even gets a pretty significant looking difference from this guy. So I like it, right? You got like the whole crew here. And just like our new Magna Convoy slash Shatter Glass guy, these guys all look far better in their robot modes than they do the truck cat mode. Like just having a beefy, strong looking Optimus Prime character is really cool. It's kind of an interesting blend of the original toy and all its, you know, blocky, bulky proportions and, you know, the more fictional appearances where he tends to be more normally proportioned. Just like that middle ground right there. And I enjoy it. I like Optimus being, you know, kind of a tough looking, adorable character. 
Now we get to see Ultra Magnus's super robot mode, and you can see he's very big and imposing looking. He's just got that wicked skull face that really transforms, you know, the body of normally a heroic character into something very sinister and kind of scary. Uh, plus, you know, having just this very wicked looking sword just helps sell the whole thing. Now, something I actually forgot to point out earlier, uh, I'm sure, you know, you're going to be tempted to take the sword and the axe and all that apart to play around and have different weapon configurations. Unfortunately, the small sword here that forms, you know, the end of the blade has this notch on the handle, which prevents him from actually being able to hold it because his hands don't open. They don't have an opening between the fingers. So he actually can't use the smaller sword on its own. He has no way of actually wielding that thing. So he can wield just the axe portion and you'll just have to put the smaller sword away. So it's a real shame. You know, that's what happens when you kind of mix and match parts between different figures. Sometimes the parts aren't as compatible as we like them to be. But aside from that little hiccup, I think he looks great. Again, he's very sinister looking. We can see just like with the smaller robot mode, he has the purple Autobot symbol, which is supposed to denote, you know, a shattered glass Autobot, an evil Autobot. Now, of course, the colors aren't always consistent. You get Autobot and Decepticon logos in all sorts of colors, depending on the figure. So you can just kind of ignore that if you want him to be a heroic character, like when we swap out the head. That's totally up to you. Uh, speaking of the head, you know, I call this bludgeon inspired earlier. So the deal with this head, it's obviously based off of the original Shattered Glass Ultra Magnus, which was a recolor of the Reveal the Shield Laser Optimus Prime, but it had a different head, one that looked pretty similar to that of the Pretender Bludgeon, or at least, you know, his Pretender head. And that was actually an unused head sculpt that, you know, was pre-tooled into the mold in case they ever want to make a bludgeon toy. Hasbro's car never used it, so Fun Publications, you know, got permission to use that head sculpt to make this Magnus, you know, stand out from the regular Optimus Prime and make it more sinister looking. And of course, they had a whole backstory behind, you know, why he looks that way. Optimus, like, ripped his face off at some point. So it was something that was kind of cool and helped him stand out and be unique. So they've gone and recreated that here, and, you know, it looks pretty good overall. It's got a lot of sculpted detailing on it, as we can see. It looks very nice. It's got the blue eyes, which the original had. Now, the one thing it doesn't do great is color matching. So it uses red paint on most of the head, which has more of a, a bluish tint to it than the red plastic. So it doesn't exactly match. In fact, his inner forearm armor has the same issue where this is painted because it doesn't match the red of the rest of it. And it's not a huge deal, but it does look a little bit off. Definitely got some two-tone effect going on here, but I do still think it's a really good head sculpt. Uh, the shoulder cannons or missile launchers, you want to call them, they are fully painted, like the missiles are painted red, and then the body of it is painted this nice glossy black, which looks cool. Does create a small issue though, let me show you. So the five millimeter peg that it uses to plug into things, whether it's the shoulders, anywhere else, that's also painted, which means it fits far more tightly into five millimeter holes than an unpainted version. So it's something to be aware of. This is the only version of this toy where they went and painted that part. And uh, it was a bad call. They should have left the handle just unpainted because you're not going to see it when it's plugged into things anyway. Uh, so yeah, they painted the whole thing. It's going to make things tight. Just be careful. Don't snap the peg off. Don't stress holes that aren't quite big enough. Other than that, it still looks really good. You see that same glossy black here on the shoulder pylons. Really neat looking figure, front and back. I always love that shiny silver right there. Here's the back of the head. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's all clear plastic, which is why you definitely don't want to just pop this thing on and off because I promise eventually that clear plastic is going to crack. So don't do that. As far as tolerances, everything on this guy is pretty solid. I already mentioned the floppy wheels, but that doesn't really affect this mode. His hips, however, are a little weak, specifically on the outward and inward motion. They're a little floppy. And you can see, you know, it's got more give than I would like, which means you may have to pose him a little more carefully so he doesn't start leaning or something. Not a huge deal. It's not super loose. You know, he's not going to fall over. But again, the mold seems to be showing its age and, you know, high amount of usage. So just be aware, the QC is not going to be as nice as it was on, you know, the first or second or even third versions of the mold. And that's something I think is a shame, but, you know, that is the reality of toy production. Things are just gonna get old and they're not gonna work as well as they used to. Now I'm gonna do something I'm sure a lot of you wanna see and that's the head swap. So to do this, you're gonna want a small screwdriver, like this little tweaker here, which is cool because it's got like a little rotating bit on the end. 
You're just going to stick it in the screw in the back. Carefully, you know, loosen the screw up a little bit. So you get it to come all the way out. Don't strip it. And when you tighten it back down, don't over tighten it because that screw will eat through that plastic pretty easily. All right, now you want to carefully separate the halves of the head. There's the front half, pull the back half away. That's where his eyes are. Ooh, creepy. So that's what you end up with. Pretty cool looking, right? So you just get rid of that. And then we take our Delta Magnus head, complete with reddish, orangish eyes. They really should be more orange. They're kind of just red, but yeah, orange would have been better. And this, you should be able to safely just pop this one on and off. And it does fit a lot more tightly than the newly sculpted head. So you can tell this is the head that was actually made for this. And the newly, newly sculpted one, a lot like kind of the Fun Pub ones, is just kind of tacked on and doesn't work as well. I am a little nervous by how tightly that snaps on there. But at least his uh, ball socket isn't made of clear plastic. So you shouldn't have to worry about any breakage. All right, so now we can get a heroic character. And I mean, look how much just changing the head changes the whole feel of this guy. Now he looks like a big heroic Autobot. And his very sinister looking sword becomes, you know, something that a champion of justice would wield. So yeah, it's amazing how a head sculpt can change a character, isn't it? Now in the new comics, this guy has an interesting thing going on where most of the time he's actually seen with this visage, like this head, but apparently this head is just a hologram. It's just an illusion he uses to cover his real face, which is, you know, the bludgeon-like one. They haven't explained so far why his face looks the way it does and why he uses a hologram to cover it up. Maybe Optimus ripped it off at some point. I'm not sure. I don't know if it's going to follow the old comics that way or not. But it is kind of a friendly facade he puts up, trying to be, you know, all official and dutiful. And he drops that facade whenever he becomes stressed or angry and, you know, kind of reverts to his scary form. So it's a cool little dynamic and, you know, kind of plays into the dual nature of this toy and how you could have, you know, either face displayed on the body. So you don't even have to pretend this is Delta Magnus. You can just pretend this is the Shattered Glass one with his hologram up. So there is that added play value, I guess. Here's a quick comparison with just the Kingdom Ultra Magnus, so you can see how these two, you know, city commander heavy hitter types could look battling together. That is, if you're imagining this guy as the one and only Delta Magnus. And they make for quite a pairing. And I don't blame anybody for buying this toy just specifically so you can have Delta Magnus. I mean, honestly, I find him more useful as that character than I do the Shattered Glass one. So, yeah, I like the way these two look together. They have a really interesting contrast where Ultra Magnus is primarily bright colors with a dark blue, you know, accent. This guy's primarily darker, deeper colors with that dark blue accent. So, yeah, I think they make for a really nice pairing and just enjoy seeing them together like this. And one final group shot. We get all of our guys in their super robot modes. And one last time, I just have to appreciate the variety in, you know, what are essentially a bunch of recolors and retools. Now these two, at a quick glance, end up looking the most similar because they are both based off the G1 Magnus and a lot of the uh, robots in disguise, you know, inspire details. And this guy kind of hide away in this mode. Uh, but then when you look closer, you can see that, you know, the colors are different. The sculpting is very, very different, especially in the torso area different head sculpts. Uh, this guy, you know, goes for like the regular eyes instead of the more cartoon inspired goggle like eyes. Even the missiles are, you know, very different. The pylons, all that stuff. Then you get this guy who sets himself apart with the brand new head, which looks very different from any others. His unique color scheme. And then of course we got Optimus just being Optimus. <laughs> Not really looking much like any of these guys. So, you know, again, really nice group shot. You can definitely have a lot of fun having these four together. Especially if you convert this guy to Delta Magnus, then they could all be on the same team. Though having two Ultra Magnuses might be a little redundant, I'm not sure. Or you can have this guy as, you know, his evil self taking these guys on and having some massive battle. I imagine his, you know, Terminus Blade or Matrix Sword, whatever you want to call it, does give him quite the edge. And he can probably take on more than one of these guys at a time pretty easily. He does seem to be very powerful. The comics are anything to go by. So yeah, again, I just, I really like all four of these guys for what they are. They have their flaws. Obviously, you know, compromises were made because of the way the base design was made, where, you know, it wasn't a 
one-for-one -one recreation of any particular Ultra Magnus instead of mixed. And even when they tried to correct that and g one it more, there was only so much they could do without massive, massive retooling. Now this guy actually did get some massive retooling, you can see how good that looks. So maybe if they had given him the same amount of retooling that they gave this guy, it would have worked out better, you know, if they actually changed the way he works more uh, structurally. But alas, this is what we ended up with. I still long for the day we actually get a proper, like, commander class Ultra Magnus, because I think that's the only way we can do him justice. And who knows, maybe they'll give that one the SG treatment too, though, I don't know, I think, I think I'm ready to move on. I don't think we need another SG Magnus anytime soon. Maybe they'll do a dedicated Delta Magnus that way, who knows. Uh, so yeah, these guys are all pretty great. One thing that I pointed out during this one's review is that he's actually a little bit of a lesser value than the Siege toy, because the Siege toy, like Optimus, comes with these leg cannons here, which are simultaneously based off of details on the Robots in Disguise Ultra Magnus, but also based on the leg cannons from the Cybertron Optimus Prime that this guy's based on. Well, this guy doesn't include those, so you do get a little bit of a lesser value. You get less toy compared to this one. This guy kind of rectifies that by, you know, he's the same mold, but he gets all this too, which helps kind of even back out the plastic budget. And depending on where you buy him, you may actually get him as a better value than this one, right? If you get him for regular leader price, which means the non-Pulse exclusive version, right? Not paying 10 extra dollars for a comic, you just get him for the normal like 55, 56 bucks. I think you're actually, you know, doing pretty well compared to, you know, paying standard leader price for a guy without an extra weapon or two. So yeah, that's just my take. They're all great in their own way. They're all flawed in pretty much the same way. <laughs> they all share the flaws, really. But I think these are all stellar toys, and I can see there being, you know, a lot of demand for this guy, even if, you know, he's kind of repetitive because he's the sixth use of this mold now. And this completes our look at the new Shattered Glass Ultra Magnus. I honestly have some pretty mixed feelings on this toy. I think it's a good toy, right? I do like the Siege slash Kingdom Ultra Magnus mold for all of its faults. It is still a really fun toy to play with. And I do think this guy looks really good as a Shattered Glass version of that. I like the inclusion of the sword. I like the new head sculpt that looks really awesome, even if it is a little bit loose. But it's still, it's not my preference. Like, I really, really would have preferred to see one based off of, you know, the Legacy Laser Optimus Prime. Even if they didn't include the trailer, like if they just sold him as a Voyager without the trailer, I would have been cool with that because the trailer is like the worst part of that mold anyway. It's, it's pretty much useless. Uh, so I would have been cool with just the robot. I mean, that's how they sold the original anyway, right? The Reveal the Shield didn't have a trailer. So, you know, the original SG Magnus didn't. So I would have been better with that and then have them save Delta Magnus for, you know, the Kingdom retool or possible, you know, there's, there's always these rumors of like a Studio Series Ultra Magnus, if that even exists, and whether or not it would be like a proper Commander version, I don't know. Um, if it does exist, then obviously I would prefer to see Delta Magnus made from that. Uh, but even just Kingdom would be fine for me, I think. So, yeah, it's just, it's not what I was going for. And then, you know, finding out that he even covers the third character in the form of Magna Convoy, now I'm just kind of like, mm. <laughs> They're, they're trying to package, I think, too much in at once, and they're doing the same thing with some of the other characters, right? You got your Slicer, uh, Slicer, <laughs> Slicer slash, you know, SG uh, Wheeljack. You got Flame War being just kind of an either or situation. It's not really doing it for me. It feels like they're just kind of copping out there, and they, they, they honestly don't have enough faith in their figures to make enough money back on each release and they just want to combine releases so i don't know maybe that's what it is could just be a matter of them not having enough slots and having a triage i don't know i like i said i would prefer it the other way but for what we get i am quite satisfied i think he comes together well it is a little weird that he can't hold his smaller sword in his hand but if you just ignore the fact that it becomes a smaller sword and just only use it as you know this big terminus blade it works out well. They worked out a decent storage for it where the handle bends at a 90 and it just kind of sits on top of the uh, vehicle mode there. You can plug it into his back if you want to, to act like you're sheathing it in some way. And, you know, it's enjoyable. So I think, you know, if you are interested in a Shattered Glass Ultra Magnus or a Delta Magnus or a Magna Convoy, he's worth picking up. Might be a little expensive to get just a Magna Convoy, but, I mean, try paying for the original one right now. So probably your best option. 
So I, I think, you know, most people would be happy with him, even if like me, they would have preferred to see him handled a little bit differently. So if you pick him up, I think you'd be more or less satisfied. If you don't care about getting the comic, then it's probably more worth it to try to get him from a different retailer so you don't pay that markup for the comic that's really not worth like 10 extra dollars. Uh, but either way, I think most people will like this guy, and I do like him for what he is. Of course, that is just how I feel about this new Ultra Magnus, so now I want to know what you all think of this toy. Are you satisfied with the way he turned out? Do you prefer him using, like, the bigger G1 base body, or would you have liked him using the Laser Optimus Prime body, or maybe something else entirely? Any and all feedback is always welcome in that comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like, let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that no uh, notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this look at the brand new Transformer Shattered Glass Leader Class Ultra Magnus. And with all that said, I will see you next time.